Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, Stephen's going to be teaching you how to play in the summertime. So if you're like me, this has always been one of those fun, feel-good summer tunes. And if you're watching this video when we're releasing it, we're in the midst of summer, so it's the perfect time to play this tune. And I gotta say that Stephen's arrangement really captures that vibe, that high energy, that fun, feel good summer vibe. So I gotta give big props to him right off the bat for really, really nailing that with this arrangement. Now I did get a chance to play through it this afternoon and I've gotta say it's perfect for the intermediate players. So if you're in that level, this is gonna be a really good challenge for you. So let's talk a little bit about this lesson. So in this video, Stephen's gonna teach you how to play the entire tune, but if you want to get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's going to be available at this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for In the Summertime. Now also on that page will be the on-screen interactive tab player. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you want. Just a great asset for learning this song that much easier. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Steven to teach you how to play this, and then I'll catch you at the end of the video. Hi everyone, and welcome to this lesson on In the Summertime by Mungo Jerry. Released all the way back in 1970, this for me is just like the quintessential summer tune. Um, and when Andrew told me we were doing a set of summer songs, this straight away was just my first choice. And when I sat down to arrange this tune, it kind of confirmed even more what a great song this is. Now, some of the lyrics have probably not aged all that well, um, but I kind of like how dated and quite frankly, inappropriate some of the lyrics are today. Uh, but we're just learning an instrumental version here, so it's all good. And I think one of the main things that attracts me to this song, um, apart from that super fun, kind of happy sound, is this really cool blues vibe that it has. This song uses a one, four, five chord progression in a classic 12 bar blues structure, which just sounds really, really cool. Um, but what does all that actually mean? Well, if we take the chords in the key of C major, which is the key we're using for this arrangement, you can see we have C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and then B diminished. So the first chord is C, the fourth chord is F, and the fifth chord is G. So in the key of C major, a 1-4-5 chord progression just simply means that we're playing the chord C, F, and G, and this is a really common chord progression used in blues music. Now that classic 12 bar blues structure I mentioned just refers to the sequence with which we play those C, F and G chords. So in 12 bar blues, we have this sequence of 12 bars, which just repeats itself. So if we take our one, four, five chord progression, our one chord, in this case, the C major chord, is played for four bars. The fourth chord, F major, is played for two bars. Then we go back to the first chord, C, for another two bars. Then we play the fifth chord, G major, for one bar, down to the fourth chord, F, for one bar, and then we finish off with the first chord C for the final two bars. Now, there are variations on that sequence, um, but that's the kind of classic 12 bar blues structure, and that's exactly what's used in this tune. So on to the mechanics of this arrangement, although we are just using the chords C, F and G, we will be playing a few variations on those chords and we will be playing them in different positions up the neck as well. So there will be a bit of movement for the left hand and for the right hand, we're gonna be using a mix of kind of strumming, chucking and picking as well. So there's quite a lot going on with the right hand and I think that's probably gonna be the biggest challenge with this arrangement. But as always, we'll go slow. I'll show you kind of exactly what I'm doing with the right hand, maybe even show you a few variations along the way too. So for the strumming chucking sections, there is a kind of general rule which hopefully will make kind of learning this piece just that little bit easier. So all the way through this piece, we're only playing quarter notes or eighth notes, um, so 16th notes in this. So really we're just playing kind of on the beat and on the ands in between the beat. So if we just think about this rule, every time we're playing on the beat, we'll be doing a down strum, and every time we're strumming on the and between the beat, we'll be strumming an up strum, okay? Now we're not always strumming, but when we are strumming, that's the rule. On the beat is a down strum, on the ands between the beats, it'll be an up strum. So if we just think about a bar of eighth notes, we've just got a really simple kind of strumming pattern, down on the beat, 
up on the and. Down on the beat, up on the and. So literally just one and two and three and four and. Or down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay. Now it's not that simple because we're not always playing just a full set of eighth notes in each measure. We've got different rhythms, but that is the kind of general rule. So if we think about applying this to measure one, what we have for measure one rhythmically is one, two, and three, four, and. So if we apply our strumming rule to that, it means we'll be doing down, down, up, down, down, up. Put that to a C chord. Down, down, up, down, down, up. Okay, so that's our kind of strumming pattern. Now it's a bit more complicated than that because beat two, although still a down strum, is actually a chuck and those last two notes aren't strums, they're single note picks. So if we kind of keep that theory but apply it to how we actually play that measure, we would have... Okay, but that theory's still there. Down, down, up, down, and then two picks, okay? So that's a rule we can just remember all the way through. If it's strumming on the beat, it's a down strum. If we're strumming off the beat on the ands, it's an up strum. Okay, bro. So I think that's probably enough theory for now. I think we'll just get into learning this. So grab yourself one of these things. And let's get stuck into it. So we start this arrangement with a pickup bar of two eighth notes before leading into measure one. So if I play the pickup bar with measures one and two together, they should sound like this. So that pickup bar is just two eighth notes, like I mentioned, so really we're sort of playing four and for the rhythm for the pickup bar. And all that is, is the E string at the third fret. We'll play that with the third finger. Just pick that single note on B4. And then the open A, we'll take that finger off as we do that. Just play the open A on the end after B4. That's just the pickup bar there, two notes leading into measure one. So then we've got to measure one, we're playing the rhythm one, two, and three four and. So beat one is just a straight C chord, so third finger on to the A string at the third and just strum down through that full chord on beat one. And then on beat two it's another down strum but it's a chuck, so what we want to do for that is just kind of take the pressure off that note but then also use the palm of the right hand as we come down. So we strum those notes, those strings but we don't sound them we don't hear them it's just a kind of muted down strum okay so that's beat one and beat two okay then straight after on the and after beat two we'll put the pressure back onto that c chord that third finger and come up with an up strum and then on beat three go with another down strum of that chord okay so just that first bit beats one two and three would be down, chuck, up, down, down, okay, then we let that ring on beat three for a full beat, and then on beat four we're going to go to this E string at the third fret, and pick that, so we use a second finger for that, but we can take the third finger off as we put the second finger on, and then just pick that E string at the third single note pick, use any finger you want, first finger, second finger, doesn't really matter, and then on the and after beat four, We'll take that off as we play the open A to finish off that measure. Okay, so that measure one once again. Perfect. So if we then take that into measure two, we just keep those fingers off because our first beat here, our first thing we do is a down strum of this all open stringed C6 chord, nice and easy. So again, straight through that on beat one but now we're playing the rhythm one and two and three, four and. Okay, so we've got a little run of picks here. That's the only strum that we do in this measure, that beat one down strum of the C6 chord, one strum, the rest of this now is single note picks. So when I do this, yeah, I think I just use kind of standard finger picking. I think I'm using the first and second fingers there to pick those E and C strings. Okay, so down on beat one, and then the and after beat one, we'll use the third finger to play the E string at the third, pick that with the middle finger of the right hand, 
and then put the second finger onto the C string at the third fret. This is just a really cool kind of E flat note playing off of the minor third. It's just a really cool kind of blues sound that we've got going on here. Um, so we pick that note on the B2, and then we'll take the third finger off, because then we want to go to an open E, so we'll pick that. But we can take that note off, we don't really want that ringing over the open E, because those two notes together don't sound particularly nice, but played separately, they sound really cool. So once we've played that E flat note on the C string, we take that finger off, take the pressure off, play the open E, on the end after beat two. And then on beat three, we come back to this open C and just pick that single note. Okay, so that first little run there, one and two and three. Really cool. Brill. And then when we play beat three, that open C note, let that ring for a full beat. And then we come back in with these two notes of the pickup bar, this E string at the third and then the open A to complete that measure. So once again, those first two measures with the pickup bar would be perfect. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three and four. On to measures three and four now. These are really just a repeat of measures one and two, apart from the last two eighth notes, they're different. So when we played measure two, the last two notes we played were E string at the third, followed by A string open. But when we get to measure four, instead of those two notes, we play C string at the second with our second finger, and then E string open. Okay, so that's the only difference compared to measures one and two. So three and four together would sound like this. So we won't go through those together and play them together because we've just done them really, it's just that one little change at the end. So we'll go into measures five and six now, they should sound like this. Okay, so measure five, the rhythm we're playing here is one, two and, and four and. And on beat one, we're playing this F6 chord, just you know, down strum on beat one. So strum through that chord on beat one, let it ring for a beat. Then on beat two, we're doing our chuck sound. So take the pressure off the chord, use the right hand palm to kind of mute the strings as we strum through them to get that chuck sound. And on the and after beat two, we're gonna do an up strum, but we want an F chord now. So that third finger, which is making this an F6, we'll take that off just to hold a normal open F chord and then hit that with an up strum on the and after beat two. Let that ring for a quarter note, then the and after beat three, we just hit that up strum again off that same F chord. Okay, so then into beat four, we put the third finger back on to complete this F6 chord, do a down strum on beat four, and then use the pinky to hammer up to the C string at the fourth fret for that final eighth note of measure five. So that measure five, once again, quite slowly, would be... A little bit slower. Brill. So then into measure six, we're now doing all eighth notes. So we're playing one and two and three and four and. So we're starting on this F6 once again. So the pinky comes off from the end of measure five. And then we play a down strum on beat one. Then the and after beat one, we don't pick. We want the open C, but we'll achieve that by just pulling this third finger off onto that open C to get that sound. So beat one, and then the end after beat one, that pull off. Beat two, we want the F6 again, so that finger goes back on. Do a full down strum of that chord. Hammer up to the fourth fret again with the pinky for the and after beat two. And then on beat three, again the F6 chord, so this finger comes off, down strum of that F6 chord once again, and then do the pull off onto the open C. Um, to get that note there. So that's the and after B3. Okay, so just that first bit, one and two and three and, we'd have one and two and three and. Okay, 
And to complete this measure, just two single note picks, we've got the A string at the second, which we're holding as part of our F chord, so we just pick that on B4, followed by the open C for the and after B4. Okay. Now, you could just pick those two notes. That pretty makes sense. Just use your thumb for the A string and the index finger maybe for the C string or the thumb for both, if you prefer that. I do some kind of weird imaginary plectrum thing here because I'm strange. This is in no way a kind of standard ukulele technique. I think this comes from my history as a guitar player before I picked up the ukulele. Um, what I tend to do with some of these bits is because I'm into the kind of strumming rhythm with this measure. So if you think about measure six, I've kind of got a strumming thing going on there. These single note picks at the end, I kind of keep a kind of strumming motion going. So although the single note picks, I'm picking them as if I've got a plectrum in my hand. So imagine playing electric guitar, you've got a plectrum in between your thumb and index finger, and you would kind of do that kind of motion to do up and down picks with the plectrum. I still do that, but using the nail of my index finger as the plectrum. So it's like an imaginary plectrum, but the nail is the plectrum, if you see what I mean. So I would kind of use the top of the nail to do a down pick, and then just a normal kind of up pick for, well, the up picks, yeah? So down with the top of the nail, and then pick up, as if it's a plectrum. So if I kind of show you what I mean with that, if I do some just notes of the C major scale, top of the nail, down pick, but then up, then down, then up, then down, then up, then down, then up. Okay, just alternating those ups and downs. So that's just something I do, that's a bit weird, that's not traditional, you might not want to do that. Um, you could try it if you want, it's pretty funky, but you could just pick those notes as well. So the way I would do this for measure six is down, 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 and then a down pick on B4, and then an up pick on the end after B4. But instead of that, you could literally just pick those notes with the thumb and the index finger, however you want, really just do standard picks. That's just my freaky imaginary plectrum technique, which is strange, I know, I'm weird, but there you go. So that's measure five and six, all together we would have A little bit slower. Brill. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three and four and... So on to measures nine and ten now, they should sound like this. So we're moving to our G chord now. We've done our four measures of the C, our two measures of the F. Now we're going to our one measure of a G. So we're going to play a G5 because we don't need the A string. In fact, we don't want to hear the A string. So what we'll do for this is we'll hold the G5 chord, but because we don't want that open A, because we're going to strum, and rather than try and control the strum so it stops at the E string, it's easier just to strum all four strings. But if we mute the A string, it doesn't matter if we hit it. So the way I do that is hold the G5, but then rather than looping the finger, fingers over to have that A string ring in, intentionally pull the wrist back a little bit so that the kind of pad of the third finger just rests and touches the A string. It doesn't fret it, it just rests on it and touches it to mute it so we don't hear it. So that way I can strum all four strings, but the highest note that I'm hearing is that G note, the E string at the third, we don't hear that A. Okay, so wrist back a little bit, rest the finger on, that's going to do that. So if we think about the, the rhythm here for measure nine, we're playing one, two, and three, four, and so this is just like kind of measure one, this kind of rhythm we come back to quite a lot in this piece. That's what we're going for. So beat one is this G5 with the muted A string, so just a down strum on that, and then beat two is this chuck, so again, pressure off here, right hand palm, just to mute those strings. And then we're gonna come back up. So pressure back on, but keep that A string muted, do an up strum 
of that chord on the AND after beat two, then on beat three back down with a down strum. Okay, so the first part there, one, two, and three. Down, chuck, up, down. Brill. Then at that ring over beat three, then like a lot of these measures, we're gonna finish off with two eighth note single picks. So this time we're playing the C string at the second. We're already holding that here, so we just pick that note on B4, then the AND after B4, we're gonna play the open E, but probably take everything off as you do that, ready to go into measure 10. Okay, so that measure nine. Okay, and then measure 10, we're going back into this F6 chord, so all fingers on that for that full chord, and then down strum on beat one, and again here we're playing all eighth notes, one and two and three and four, and so beat one is a down strum, and then on the AND after beat one, we're gonna pull this third finger off onto the open C. Then on beat two, we're gonna hit the A string at the second. That's just a single note pick, but again, I do this kind of imaginary plectrum up and down thing, but you could just pick that with a thumb. That A string either works, okay? And then on the AND after beat two, we're gonna do an up pick of this C string at the second. So the third finger goes back on to pick that single note on the end, that to beat two. Then beat three, we pull that back off onto the open C to sound that out. So we're not picking that, we're just using the pull off to sound out that open C. So if we just stop there and look at one and two and three, we've got Okay, then the AND after beat three, we hit that A string at the second again. And then this time we play the open C on beat four, and then hammer onto the second fret to finish that note off there, the, the AND after beat four. Okay, so nice and slow, that whole measure. A little tricky one, that one, to get that sequence of hammer-ons and pull-offs. Um, but once you've got it, it flows really well and sounds really good, that measure. Okay, so maybe spend a bit of time practicing that one. Okay, because it sounds really cool. So put it together with measure nine. Perfect, a little bit slower. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three and four and... Okay, so the last two measures of this 12 bar sequence um, for this A section, we go back to that C chord, the first chord um, for two measures. So we're playing actually just the same as measures one and two really. So it's this kind of repeating pattern that we see quite a lot through this piece. Um, so it's that. Okay, but like a lot of these times, these last two notes, the four and they vary quite a bit depending on what section we're going into. So this is a new couple of notes now because that's the end of the A section, the kind of intro instrumental. These last two notes we're going to play now are going to lead us into the verse, the kind of lyric section, which we play higher up the neck, so an octave higher, just to give it a bit of a different sound, bit of separation, um, just sounds quite cool. So what we're going to do after we've played our standard, up to beat three of measure 12, which is identical to measures kind of one and two, up to that beat three. These last two notes now, we're gonna come up to the A string at the 10th. We need the first finger and just pick that note. And then we're gonna hammer up with the third finger to the 12th fret on the A string. And that's the last two notes there, four and. Okay, so there's two measures together. Perfect. Um, so we'll not try those two because, you know, we've seen them before. The only thing we're doing different there is that A string hammer 10 to 12. So we'll go straight into the B section now and have a look at the verse. So onto the B section now, the verse we've just played at the end of measure 12, this A string 10th fret hammering up to the 12th. 
that takes us into measure 13, the start of this verse section. So measures 13 and 14 together should sound like this. Okay, so if we look at the rhythm for measure 13, we're playing one and two and and four and we're on a C chord again we're doing the same 12 bar sequence but we're playing the C chord up an octave higher here so that's why we're at the top of the neck so what we're going to do is hold the C chord with the pinky on the A string at the 15th and then the second finger on the E string at the 12th okay the other two strings are open C and the G are just open so from the hammer that's why we use the first and third fingers for the hammer at the end of bar 12 leading into this so we can then throw the second and fourth fingers on to hold that C chord, okay? So what I would do though, the first finger, which was holding the A string 10th at the end of measure 12, keep that on. So when we hammer up to the 12th fret, third finger comes off, these two go on, but the first finger stays on behind. Then beat one, we just strum through a down strum of that C chord, then the and after beat one, we come up with an up strum, then on beat two, one of these chucks, so very similar to the first section here, take the pressure off there, use the hand to strum and chuck that um, all four strings together. Then the and after beat two, put the pressure back on, come with an up strum through that chord once more. Okay, so just that first bit, one and two and. One and two and. Down, up, chuck, up. Okay, so then let that ring for a quart note, and then on the and after beat three, come up with another up strum of that C chord. Then on beat four, we're gonna bring the A string down to the 12th fret, so the pinky will come off, and the third finger will take the 12th fret there. Down strum on beat four, then the and after beat four, pull off onto the A string 10. So that third finger was just put on. Once we play the down strum, Pull it off onto that first finger that's why we keep that first finger there through this measure so it's there ready to receive that pull off so just that measure 13 once again a bit slower brill then into measure 14 we put that third finger back onto the 12th and then play through that chord so down strum on beat one and we're playing the same rhythm here, one and two and and four and. So beat one is that chord, strum through, pull off onto the 10th fret, just like we did before. That's the and after beat one. Then on beat two, pick this E string at the 12th, just a single note pick on that. Then single note pick the A string at the 10th, which we're holding there already. And then that ring for a quarter note. Then on the and after beat three, hit the open G with the thumb. And then we'll play this double stop, which we're holding of A string 10th, E string 12th. Maybe just pick those with two fingers together. And then hammer up with the third finger to that 12th fret for the last note of this measure, the and after B4, that hammer onto the 12th. Okay, so that measure, just measure 14. Brill. And then with measure 13. bit slower smash in so let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now three and four and On to measures 15 and 16 now, they should sound like this. Okay, so very similar to the previous two measures, measures 13 and 14, just a couple of subtle differences here and there. So if we look at measure 15, that is exactly the same as 13 up until the end, up until beat four. So the first part of it, that's exactly the same. So one and two and, and, Okay, then on beat four, what we're gonna do now is come down to the A string at the 10th. So pinky comes off, first finger takes that, then on beat four, we just play that chord, down strum through it, 
and let it ring for a full quarter note. That's the only difference there to measure 13. Okay, so that measure 15 again. Brill. Then when we go into measure 16, this again is identical to measure 14, just until the end, those last couple of eighth notes. So again, we have our... Okay, one and two and and. Then the four and, what we do now is we bring the first finger down to the A string of the fifth, pick that single note, then use the third finger to hammer up to the A string seventh. Okay, so very similar to the previous two measures, just a couple of subtle differences. So once again, that measure 15 and 16. Brill. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three and four and... Measures 17 and 18 now should sound like this. Okay, so measure 17, we're moving to this F chord now, part of our 12 bar blue structure. So the rhythm for measure 17 is one, two and, and four and. Beat one is this F6 chord, which we're holding with just a full fifth fret bar with the first finger. So we just down strum on beat one. Let that ring for a quarter note. Then on beat two, we'll just take the pressure off and do our chuck on beat two there. And then the and after beat two, we're gonna do an up strum, but we want to then hold the E string at the eighth with the pinky. And we don't want the A string when we up strum, we just wanna strum up from that E string. Or if you use the little finger to mute that A string, we could just do a full up strum of all four strings. And we wouldn't hear that A, you would just hear that E string eighth note that we want. Okay, so that's the and after B2, an up strum of that chord. Let that ring for a quarter note, then the and after beat three, up strum again on that same chord. Then on beat four, we're going to take that pinky off, do a down strum on that full fifth fret bar. So we hear that A string at the fifth coming out as the melody note, and then we hammer up to the seventh with the third finger for the and after B4. Okay, so just that measure 17. So down, chuck, up, up, down, hammer. Brill. So then if we take that straight into measure 18, we keep that held. Our first note now is a pull off, so we're not picking anything or strumming anything on this beat one of measure 18, which is all eighth notes by the way. The first note is just this pull off back to the A string fifth. So we're keeping this bar on into this measure. We just pull off that seventh fret we've just played onto the fifth. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the E string at the eighth, so the pinky goes back on, but we just pick that single note on the end after beat one. Then we take that off and play the full F6 chord with a down strum. So we hear that A string fifth. Then a bit like before, we hammer up to the seventh and then pull back off onto the fifth. Okay, now what we're gonna do is play the A string at the fifth, which we're holding as part of our bar. And we just play that with a pick. Use your thumb or this imaginary plectrum weird technique that I use. And then what we're gonna do is play the E string at the fifth, pick that single note and hammer up to the E string at the eighth with the pinky. Okay, so with this two bars here, they are a little bit tricky in terms of the hammer-ons and pull-offs, trying to keep the rhythm nice and sort of consistent as well. With it being a bar, it's quite a hard one to practice slowly because of the pressure you've got to put on and that starts aching. So again, maybe take a bit of time with these two measures, take them slow. If we're having trouble with them, take that bar off and shake it off. Don't keep it on too long because it, it does start to hurt. Okay, so I'll play them once again really slowly, 17 and 18. And then a little bit slower. Smashing. 
So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three and four and... So on to measures 19 and 20 now. These are just the same as measures one and two. We're back to that C chord. that point there it's the same as measures one and two but now at the end of measure 20 we're going to play the a string fifth on beat four and hammer up to the seventh for the and after beat four okay so those two measures okay so those two notes we've just played they're taking us into our g chord um, so measure 21 is our single measure of our g chord remember this 12 bar blues sequence and in the song, this is the bit where they sing, um, have a drink, have a drive, go out and see what you can find. Maybe in 1970, Mungo, but I don't think that's sound advice for 2022. Okay, so tw measure 21, we're playing this G chord here where we have a three quarter bar with the first finger across the top three strings, G strings open. Pinky takes the A string at the 10th, and then we play on beat one of measure 21, just that full strum down that G chord. Okay, so the rhythm we're playing here in measure 21 is one, two, and three, four, and. So beat one was that, G chord. Beat two is the chuck, so pressure off, mute the strings. Then the and after beat two, put the pressure back on, come up with an up strum on that chord. Beat three, back down with the down strum. Okay, so just that first part there, one, two, and three, we would have okay and then beat four and the and after beat four are just muted strums so what we're going to do is we'll take the pressure off that chord we'll bring the first finger up so it covers the g chord sorry the g string so we can mute that string but as we're doing this down up strum on the four and the and after beat four we'll just be moving our finger down to the fifth fret so it's ready on beat one of the next measure to play that down strum of the F6 chord. So that muted down up at the end of measure 21, just use it as a transition to move that first finger into position there, ready for beat one of measure 22. So just that measure 21. Okay. And then we're ready in position for measure 22, which should sound like this. So the first part that easy um, that first part of measure 22 beats one and two and is just down up down up on this F6 chord this full fifth fret bar that's all we're doing then the and after beat two we let that ring for a quarter note when we've done that up strum that just rings for a quarter note and then the and after beat three we put the pinky on and play the E string at the eighth just pick that note pull off onto the fifth fret which we're holding as part of our bar, and then hammer it back on to the eighth for that last note there in measure 22. So that measure again, measure 22. Brill. So with measure 21, we would have... Smash in. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three and four and so then measures 23 and 24 we're going back to that c chord again okay and at the end of measure 24 we're playing that a string 10th hammering up to the A string 12th, just to repeat that uh, vocal section again, that B section, we just go around and play it again. Just the same as before, okay. So then once we've played that B section through a second time, when we get to the end of measure 23, we then jump to measure 25, which is exactly the same as measure two. Okay, this just leads us back into that A section now, which we're gonna play through once more just to finish off this arrangement. So after we've played measure 25, we go back to measure one, 
and we play through measures 1 to 11. And then once we've played measure 11, we're then going to jump to the coda, measure 26, just to finish off this piece. So measure 26 on its own will sound like this. Okay, so as you've heard there, pretty much the same again as measure two, just with that chord at the end there on beat three. So the rhythm there for measure 26 is one and two and three. And as I say, the first part, one and two and. I've seen that many times. The only difference here now, instead of that open C note on beat three, like we've been playing, we're gonna finish it off with the C chord up the neck of A string 15th, E string 12th, the C and the G open. Just strum through those on beat three. Let that ring for the rest of the measure. So if I play that with measure 11, um, and then 11 into 26, we would have... Okay, so there it is. That's the whole arrangement. I hope you have loads of fun learning this one. Look after yourselves, and I will see you next time. All right, guys, so this week's ukulele lesson was a ton of fun. It's just one of those fun, feel-good summer tunes with a ton of energy, and Stephen really nailed that with this arrangement. He really captures that vibe, and it's so much fun to play. So guys, I wanted to give you a friendly reminder that if you did want to get the tabs to print off Keep Free Records, that was available at this link right here, or you can also go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for In the Summertime. Now also on that page was the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer, so you can literally hit play, you can watch that tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.